YouTube. We just hit you with the Apex review. I got another one, actually, from the same guild. I wasn't fully aware of this, but my last three reviews have all been from the same guild. Um, I go way back with Veritas. I know a lot of them, but I wasn't aware they're all here. And this might be the spiciest one yet. So stay tuned. Mace, we're joined by Mace1370. He is a streamer. He does have YouTube content. So all of that, as per usual, will be in the description or in the pinned comment. But without further ado, Mace, how are you doing today, man? Can you give a quick introduction for everyone? I'm good, Car. Thanks for having me on. Uh, so I started playing Epic 7 after the first SSB banner. Um, I timed it really well. I literally started playing right after her banner went away, so that was a little traumatizing. <laughs> and I got into RTA uh, towards the end of the first season. Uh, so in the second season, I kind of pushed as hard as I could, but I wasn't able to make Legend. Uh, then I did make Legend in Season 3 and also in Season 5. Uh, pretty much just an RTA player and obligatory guild war attacks uh, when requested from our guild leader. Got it. Yes, and I do know your guild leader. So you you didn't play until Seaside Bologna. That was, I think, chat, was that like six months in? Do you remember, Mace? She came in that first summer, right? On the first year? I, I think it was like at the end of the first year. End but of the I first could year. be wrong. Okay. Either way, he's not completely day one, but um, he has been playing for quite a while. And you said you missed out on SSB and drink? Un unfortunately, yeah. Got it. Yeah, I know that pain. All right, so Mace, what would you kind of say? We're going to just go straight down the units like we always do, but um, what kind of player would you say you are? I'm pretty firmly a standard player. Standard. Guys, we don't get a lot of standard players here. It's always like cleavers. Um, it's pretty much always cleavers. I think the last standard we... Would you... Would you um, do you consider Rikazo a standard player, Mace? I consider him standard, yeah. Really? Maybe okay. on the aggressive end of the spectrum. It's all a big gradient, and it's basically just what speed you kind of want to play the game at. I love that. He's and so a little bit faster. Yeah, Mace, just real fast, and then we're going to start. What do you? What's your definition of a standard player? Standard players pick predominantly meta units. Uh, there's you know typically several characteristic openings in any particular meta. They do that, and then they generally uh, attempt to play the game around an average speed between 200 and 230, somewhere in there. And if you are playing in the 250 range, that's kind of aggro. And if you're going 300, that's kind of cleave. Okay, so it just depends how much you scale up the speed and stuff. But typically, you just play the meta units, and you're it's pretty versatile, right? Yeah, I mean, oftentimes you'll pick Soul Weaver's tanks or both, mixing them in you know, with a couple appropriate DPS and reacting to your opponent. Um, I think standard rewards trying to be flexible. So you, you take picks in the beginning that don't have strong counters. And then as your opponent takes picks, you counter those picks. Love it. But it doesn't necessarily mean turn two, because like you said, if you play more aggressive, we could Correct. not, we, we're not always full reactive. Okay. Well, anyways, Mace, let's go start down the list. And so we had this KC on the screen for a while and you were mentioning in chat, um, right before we hit the record button, guys, Mace, I'll just recap it real fast so we can move quickly. But he said she's not super draftable at the moment. So this is not his best gear, even though I think it's still pretty good. Uh, mainly because of Rimu, who's out right now. Right, Mace? Because if we want... she Did you say she's pretty reliant on Alexa's basket? I think she is, yeah. Y you need that gab to be impactful. And then if there's Rimu on the other side of the field, either we have to force ban him or we have to swap our artifact, which you say she kind of needs. So he doesn't dedicate the best gear for her because she's kind of a liability... In your draft and i'm assuming mace from what i've just heard from your play already we're very very i think everyone is nowadays but you more so than most very high draft iq if i had to guess oh it doesn't feel that way when i draft honestly <laughs> but you do put a lot of thought into it right oh yeah for sure okay all right so mace next up we got pavel which as a standard player how often did this does this guy get picked i picked him a lot more before aol came out and i had him at like 293 i think uh, so that I could draft him a little bit earlier in the draft. Mm -hmm. uh, generally speaking, if you want to take a DPS unit like that, that just does big damage, the earlier you want to pick them, the faster their speed needs to be, so that it makes it difficult for your opponent to speed contest. Because AOL is a really prevalent unit now, I slowed him down to 270 and just gave him damage, and that gives me the ability to take him like 4th or 5th in the situation where AOL's not on the table. Right, so the difference between you running this and then a cleaver running this, like you mentioned, is we lower the speed, so we're not worried if we pick him too early, he might get outsped. But for you, it seems like, I think you just have, do you have most of the units ready? We're going to find out soon, but Mace, I think one of your strengths might be that you have every unit, you just cater them to where, like, let's say a cleaver will want them first pick 300 speed. You're going to have access to everyone, and when you identify that right moment to bust them out, 
Pavel's coming in fourth and fifth, you said? Yeah, I think that's one of the stronger aspects of my account. It's just the sheer number of units that are built. And Mace, on top of that, right? Because we always hear like, in the past, it's like been Cerise. We talk about this on the stream a lot. Cerise has to be like 290. For you though, a lot of these speed contest units, we can bring them as a standard player, make them slower. We just can't early pick them, right? That's kind of what a lot of people have been um, advocating for, but it's easier said than done. And it's like investing gear into units that are just picked later. But for you, it's a huge strength, I, I bet. I, I agree with that. You can also bluff too. Like if you draft a Cerise early, yes. a lot of people just won't speed contest you. That's actually pretty important. Okay, moving on to the next one. We got Opsig. What do you think about Opsig as a whole? And oh, guys, I haven't been showing the gear. Hold on. Let me go to Power real fast. I'll just hover over it real fast. But Mace, if you can ta start talking about Opsig for us. So I think Opsig is really strong right now into players that pick FCC. Uh, she's pretty much a requirement if you want to play aggressively once the opponent has taken that tank. She's hard to pick outside of, you know, people taking FCC into you, though. Got it, got it. Um, Mace, when, when you do pick her opposing uh, opposite of FCC, how often do you end up just banning the FCC anyways? Uh, almost never, unless I'm 100% sure they're going to ban OPSIG. Okay. But very important, you said, for aggressive players? Yeah, and this is kind of something that you can flex into. So a Cleaver might have OPSIG built at like 270+. Plus. And uh, because I, I don't really play that play style, I have her at 250 and that'll outspeed most things. And I can pick her in scenarios where I'm pretty confident she'll get the first turn anyways. Uh, Guiding Light means that I don't really have to worry about a last pick Acid if I take her, you know, like third, fourth or fifth. And uh, she has enough damage even on Guiding Light to pretty much kill anything. Uh, okay. With attack buff. Sounds good, man. And she is triple S'd. RB up next. This guy, oh, though. Yeah, I think you unlocked Opsig. <laughs> oh, did, did I unlock her? her? I'm sorry. I was clicking the memory imprint just to see that. <laughs> My bad. So, Arbiter Vildred up next. How often are we picking this guy, Mace? Not very often. He is um, kind of like fifth mech material at the moment. Yeah. There are there's so many things that punish AoE, and because his a AoE you know, can be countered, uh, it's just really hard to take him. But, you know, when he's good, he's good. He's just that the the areas we can use him in are just by the day just getting less and less right. It's been it's been a downward slope for a while. Would you recommend new players, Mace, between Spectenny or Arby if those are their choices? What do you think? I think Spectenny has a broader usage. She's really useful in PVE, and they've given us so many you know good farmer units. And with the penguins, you don't really farm in dog walk anymore yep. anyway. So. Exactly. So the reason I wanted to ask Mace this, guys, because if Mace is a unit that has every unit available as in his toolkit, and he's one of the top players, if even he is picking RB less and less, I think really, we've always been kind of giving the edge to, to Spectre Tenebria, but even as um, someone who will use a unit, right, Mace will use the unit if they're viable. Um, he said even for him, RB's getting less and less play, so I really, let's lean towards Spectre even more so now. Milim is up yeah, next, so. Mace, and this one is very... Um, this one has a lot of different thoughts. Like our, our last review, Apex wasn't the biggest fan. What do you think about Milim right now? I think she's fine. Uh, she's not a unit that I take early, and I don't think most people could take her uh, early unless you had like absurd speed gear on her or something. She is uh, a unit that can answer kind of a niche scenario in draft, which is you're playing aggressively and they have Landy. So she's nice for that. So mainly for you just... Uh, later in the draft and when we see a Landy opposing? Typically Landy, yeah. Maybe occasionally uh, some other grass DPS or if they have a reviver and they have squishy units, uh, then I might take her because of the extinction. So that could be another use case scenario for her. Got it. Okay. Next up is Caesarea. And she does, she is geared up. Are you, how often do we bust out the Caesarea cleave, Miss? Uh, I've been doing it a lot in preseason just to kind of play around with it so I can get a feel. I wouldn't say this is super premium gear on her or anything. It's kind of just like a test build. Um, I wanted her at least 240 speed to be able to outspeed some things and then uh, at least 150 effectiveness and a bunch of damage. Um, it, it works. It's a pretty strong draft. Yeah. I think that uh, a lot of players still don't have answers built up to it. Um, it feels really bad when you get casinoed, though. So there's that. Of course, yeah, the RNG aspect. As a standard player, though, how hard would it be to like implement this? Like, do you have to all in from the get go, or can you kind of pivot into uh, Caesarea Cleave as a standard player? 
Uh, you can just kind of pick it up whenever, honestly, but it's something that you need to kind of build your account around in, in order to do that. So notice like Opsig is 250. So if I pick Ray and Cesaria and I have Opsig on my team, both Ran and Opsig can activate Cesaria. So you need to have your account built in a way that you have, you can easily draft two activators with her. Otherwise they just ban out the activator and she doesn't really do much. Got it. Okay. Next up is Straws or Strays. And this is like, um, I think this is pretty much what uh, Apex was kind of rocking here. Do you, does he get seen a lot? Uh, I'm assuming a later pick as well. Yeah, he's later when I'm playing aggressive. And he was better. He had a plus 30 Draco played on. Uh, I would like to get another plus 31, but uh, I didn't wail when the Luna Banner came back around. Um, so I kind of regret that. Sure. Uh, so I'd like him to have like 4100 attack, which I think he would with a plus 30 Draco plate. And this is when um, you're playing ag aggressive, you said? Correct, yeah. Um, so I'm assuming, do you, does he ever come out when you're playing standard and your opponent just picks like a ton of knights or do you think there's too many oh, yeah. counters to him right now? No, I think you have to, you have to know how people are countering him. Yeah. Uh, and it's fairly common for people to try and cheese you with certain heroes like Senya, uh, you know, built with really high HP. Uh, for example, you could also build a Ravi with high HP and then build yep. a bunch of tanks that are like just underneath her. And... Uh, so in, in those scenarios, if you know the opponent's done that or you suspect they've, they've done that, you obviously don't pick him. But if they have a Crow or an FCC on the board, there's no cheese there. They're going to die. All right. Sounds good. Closer Charles. Here's um thoughts on Closer Charles overall. 30 Shepherds. Yeah, I think he's really strong. Again, um, not against every single player. Like I wouldn't first pick this Closer Charles. Uh, I'm not light. I don't have like a 291. Yeah. Um, so this is pretty much as good as I could get him. But I think that, you know, against players that really tank down, uh, he is amazing because he provides so much offensive pressure on your team. He's very strong. So far, yeah, we've seen that you can do Ciceria Cleave. You can play Hyper Aggro with like Opsig, Closer, Charles, Pavel. Um, I'm, we haven't even seen the Knights and Soldiers yet as we go down the CP, but already you can do so many different play styles. Um, Bryceri up next. She. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about Bryceri? Um, she was actually fairly impactful on the last day or, or the last few days of the prior season uh, because people were drafting in a way that kind of opened themselves up to her where they didn't really take a cleanser until the end. Yeah. And so then she, she was good. Um, now with, uh, you know, Keckwick running around, feels harder to, you know, use her. So hardly ever pick her, but every so often you can sneak her in and she'll do a bunch of damage. Okay. And then 15% you. But ML Kulwarek definitely kind of reduced her uh, viability a bit, you think? That and just all the other cleansers and stuff running around, like, you know, made Chloe and... Of course, but then Kulwarek on top of that, like, and people are, like, first, second picking him, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And, and when people have that common opener, like, you're just never going to get to a Briar Witch. Yeah. Um, top model Lulika up next. Uh, she's on just um, Katie's is this, gear. Is this Guild... Oh, did you say you... Are we running this in Katie's? Yeah. It's really? like a slow Katie's team. Okay. Um, viability wise, if you did want to bring her to PvP, do you think she does? There's just better units at the moment, or doesn't really fit your playstyle. I'd play probably style? just rather take Milam than her most of the time. Yeah. Okay. So maybe, Mace. But, I might I ask mean, this to you later. Yeah, you could probably you could probably take her like a fifth pick if you just wanted to blow an RB up or something. Do you think but she needs her, any her buffs? Kind of suboptimal. Do you think she needs buffs, or are you kind of okay where she's at as a hero? I think for the most part, she's okay. I'm not really sure how they would buff her. Yeah, that's the hard part with a lot of the last few that the, everyone's wanting bust for. Okay. Next up, Fire Meru. Yeah, so this was a unit that was kind of a menace for a little while and then dropped off. I, I think people kind of got bored of using her. And I think she's still very strong in the right circumstance. But we're back in a place in the meta where AoE is so punished right now. It's just hard to take her. AoE is punished. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Uh, well, Rimuru, for example, steals sure. buffs and attacks, right? So that's mm -hmm. one thing. And then you have the whole suite of evasion units like Bellion, you know, all that crap. Um, it feels like you press one button and you just watch, you know, 10 turn sequences happen. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Okay. But you said it might be out of boredom and you still think she's a strong unit, right? Just seen way I less. I think she is, yeah. I think she's still strong. Uh, the problem that I have with Mercedes is... She's very dependent on having attack buff, and you know AOL is out there, so you can't really take her if AOL is on the table. Um, 
Additionally, she can be a bit of a liability with her res and ML haste. And th these are all kind of like making her use case more and more narrow. Mm. Um, and then the last thing is she's kind of RNG with her magic for friends. If it procs at the right time, you do so much. But then if it doesn't proc, uh, she just feels like she's kind of a wet noodle. Right, but that's a lot of counter units, right? Um, that just, that's just RNG. And I think a lot of players, I, is that kind of you as well? You kind of, if you can avoid it, you don't like to play the counter style because of, I think you mentioned in the CC area, the casino, right? As you put it. Yeah, I, I avoid counters whenever possible. Okay. Speaking of counters, though, Spirit Eye Celine Mace, how's she been feeling? I really like her a lot. Um, she doesn't feel like an RNG unit because she always counters when she gets crit, right? And mm -hmm, the majority true. of the time, she's going to get crit. So I, I don't think she's really RNG. Um, I've tried her on a few different builds. I tried her on a speed build where she had, I think, about 250 speed, but I wasn't that impressed with it. Um, that might just be because of my playstyle. I'm a slightly slower player than maybe people who really go aggressive. And uh, when I had her on Lifesteal, it felt really good because she was really able to counter uh, single target bruiser teams. Um, so A Ravi, uh, Fire Ravi, LQC, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the Lifesteal set just makes her, it feels like every time she gets a hit in, she just goes back up to full life. The extra healing is definitely noticeable. And at 231 yeah. speed, is that kind of the lowest you're willing to go? I had her. I tried her at 221 as well, and that felt a tad too slow. So I, I don't think I'd run. 230 below is a sweet spot. Okay. And the other, the for being 230 on lifesteal, 300 crit damage, pretty much, and still 3600. Very nice stats. You just go as much damage as you possibly can. You're right. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, yeah, I, I feel like this damage feels good. Got it. Um, Sigurd, we can skip, right? One shot hunts or something. She's Expedition. just on wyvern duty. Yeah. Got it. All right. Next up, Politus. Uh, Politus is still really good. Um, she's decent into cleave. She's decent with cleave. She's, to me, more of a reactionary pick than a proactive one. Um, some cleavers take her really early, but I, I tend to take Politus into like Amelia's, for example. Um, she's a little tricky to draft though because a Ravi can punish her really hard. She's so squishy that if you take her into an Amelia, like the Amelia can just not do anything, and then you're basically giving the a Ravi a free revive. Yeah. So you, you kind of have to evaluate the situation and I, I feel like you can't take her into a ravi so that's lower to use case a bit but she still comes out i think yeah guys i i've been finding the same so the same kind of scenario she's a liability because she is super squishy and you even invested though some bulk right the 1300 defense is quite mm -hmm. a bit um and still for you it's still just kind of hard and a ravi's everywhere all right next up remnant violet mace i just built one of these bad boys tell us about the uh the rylet build very nice stats oh my god yeah, I basically just wanted him to explode things, and he does that. He hits really hard. Um, he hits really the hard. The lifesteal is yeah. nice, um, and he has just enough bulk to take a couple hits. Um, I think that he is in a decent spot right now. Um, his strength is that he doesn't have a ton of super, super strong counters. I mean, you have like AOL and Flurry, but not many people are taking Flurry anymore. Yeah. And so if AOL is pre-banned, he can often be kind of a later, like safe DPS to take, mm -hmm. um, especially if you have like an Amelia or someone to boost him. Mace, where, um, do you know this? I'm not a big gear score guy, but what, do you know how the gear score of your Remnant Violet here? Uh, I can check. I think it's around 420 though. 420, which is, I'm just That's saying, cause I- 428. I built one recently, and your stats, I think, are, like, super, super good. Um, as a whole, though, you said you like to... He just blows up some units. Where, how do you think his viability is at the moment? Just, like, on a on a tier list. Do you think he's... Uh, I mean, you invested some great gear to him, right? So, how often do you pick him? Hmm. I don't pick him a ton. Maybe one out of ten games. Okay. Yeah. Is that I'd, also, though, because some of the RNG of on his kit... Like in terms a of a bit, few dodges. Yeah. I, I find I tend to take him more in scenarios where I just don't have other good options. And he, Can he's you just hear a kind of a the approaching ruin? Got it, got it. Okay. Next up, we got Vivian. Uh, uh, PVE, I think right? She's Ban Banshee one shot. Banshee yeah, one shot, got it. Uh, K-Ron? Any uh, PvP world, usage? World boss world gear. Boss, I guess you could just pick him against like a team that doesn't bring one of his million counters. But you never, you never really bust them out right i can't remember the last time i picked it on <laughs> okay fair enough wait mace we did put some molas into the s2 though just for fun uh, i think he was one of the first heroes i molded got so, it okay <laughs> yeah mistakes were made next up a um this 
Is this PvP? I mean, he's got immunity. He's PvE for the most part. I, I think his gear is like borderline acceptable to draft. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he. I haven't really been picking him very much. Okay. Uh, I, I would regear him if I wanted to take him more consistently in PvP. Fair enough. I mostly use him for expos. Um, Landy. Here we go. Yeah, Thoughts Landy is Landy. still pretty absurd. So. The stats: uh, 200 speed. 3300 attack, still 15 and 15 on Guiding Light. Um, yeah, this is a very, very strong Landy. Now, Mace, this is one, though, a lot of players are kind of moving stats around on her. I think players recently are going, like, mega fast. For you, though, this is still working just fine? Look, Landy's one of those heroes that has an incredibly strong kit, and that means that you can build her in a variety of ways. You can use her as a cleaver, you know, if you build her really fast as an initiator. Yeah. I know a bunch of people on ladder do that. You can put her on counter set. You can, you know, slow her down, speed her up. Right. Uh, so you can kind of give her stats to fit the rest of your account. And for me, this is just a standard bruiser stat spread, like 200 speed tanky with enough damage to kill people. I think this is a standard Landy, right, chat? YouTube watching? This is a standard Landy just with the best gear I think we've seen in a while. Mace, is this some of your best gear or not even? Um, it is probably some of the best. I think it's like 448 gear score, so it's pretty Jeez, high. Jeez, okay. All right, moving on. Luna, uh, PvE, right? I'm assuming? Yeah, she's at Expos. Do you think she has any RTA viability still? Yeah, you can use her as a cleave. As a cleave, like single okay. target cleave, yeah. She has. She does a lot of damage. Yep, all right. Next up, a Tywin. I think you need really good gear to do that, though. Of course, yeah. How about a Tywin? He's still really strong. Uh, people aren't really picking him a lot right now. That might be because of, you know, Keckwick again. Uh, he would counter Tywin pretty hard. But again, it you know, in that like fourth fist slot, if they've taken a bunch of bruisers or something and um, they only have one cleanser mm -hmm. and they don't have like an immunity uh, provider or an immunity buffer. We bring him out. Then, you know, yeah, exactly. He can he can just stun lock the whole team. Got it. Okay. I hope he makes a comeback a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think I don't think the bruiser build is very effective anymore. A, a lot of people were running that. You know where he would have um, like 100% crit chance and 250 crit damage. Sure, yeah. On on similar bulk, um, and that was good before all the soul weavers got really popular. And now all the soul weavers just kind of passively out heal that damage, so it doesn't feel impactful. Um, so I swapped him to high effectiveness, um, so he'll be able to stun and slow pretty much anything. I like it. Okay, he has one game plan. All right, um, Ren. Uh, he's kind of on just rando spare gear just to play with him with Isaria. So um, that Caesarea Cleave thing you're doing is mo mostly for testing, right? If you were climbing for, mm -hmm. like, Legend Ladder, um, how often is he being... Does he get busted out a lot? I I've been drafting him a lot in preseason just to play around with him. But I think that if I was seriously going to use him for, uh, like, a Legend push, I would want him at, like, 310 speed. Okay. Next up is F Fallen Cecilia. Oh, high effectiveness build. Okay. Why do we opt for yeah, that, so Mace? Uh, this is, uh, like, her bulk is, I think, pretty typical for standard and around the same speed mark. So, um, once you achieve those stats, you typically have extra rolls on your gear because, you know, you have, um, extra substats that aren't HP or defense, right? Right. Speed. So some people will go crit or some people will go, exactly. like, ER, but you opted for the effect just because her provoke is so powerful? Her provoke is really powerful, and there's a lot of people running around with, like, 100 ER Amelias, yep. so it feels really nice to just provoke lock them. Makes sense. All right. like the build. Okay, Holiday Fiend is, um, she's one mace that everyone has a different opinion on. How do you feel about her right now? I think she's pretty garbage, but, <laughs> yeah. That, well, I, like I, think, I said, um, guys, everyone has a different opinion on the Holiday yeah, Fiend. Why, why yeah, do we like, think she's kind of bad? Well, it's mandatory aoe on all her abilities so she can be uber punished by yeah, a ton of different you things. highlighted the anti-aoe meta at the moment um yeah and she does essentially zero damage so you're triggering all of those anti-aoe things and you're not even getting damage out of it so that feels bad um and then her cleanse is a one-time thing so she just doesn't do enough okay um that being said though mace the how often do would you say you draft her in like a season or just i guess in general does she ever get busted out even though she's bad for you? I wouldn't draft her right now. I don't, I don't think this is really her meta. Yeah. Um, I think that, I guess, hypothetically, if all my other answers were banned and somebody picked up Tenny, I could consider her. Okay. 
Makes sense. All right, next up we got Rimu, who this is one, like, we kind of mentioned he's sort of why a lot of units are maybe falling off, or you at least have to be aware of his presence, right? So, Mace, I'm assuming this guy sees a lot of play. Yeah, he gets first picked a lot. Um, whether he fits your play style or not, he's annoying to play against. <laughs> yes. So it's, you know, a good idea to figure out how to fit him into your draft, if only so you don't face him. Yeah, and Mace, I think this gear, chat, I think this gear is... So you went for the, yes, the two two two. Um, mm -hmm. Would you do you think this is like the? I think he can be run in a million different ways, and like you said, a lot of different play styles. But is this what yeah. you've been liking the most so far? I, I really like it for standard. Again, he's a hero that has a completely overloaded kit, and that means that you can build him in a lot of different ways. You could build him super high damage and use him, you know, in aggro. Uh, I have him built tankier, so I can use him in standard. I'm Mace, I'm gonna throw I'm gonna show everyone the gear one more time because I think this is also some of your best gear, correct? Yeah, I, th I think he's also actually 448 gear score. Oh my god. Guys, so he, Mace is like the same speed that I, I think a lot of us are running on speed set. He has way more bulk than I, than I see than most, and only slightly less attack, even if if even that, and less crit damage, and he's got pen and immunity. This is crazy. If I had a remove like this, I would definitely first pick him all the time too, man. I, I kind of banned mine though, Mace, because like you said, it's he's just he's annoying to fight against. But yours is crazy, dude. Um, overall though, Mace, can we get a minor spoiler? Who do you think is the best geared unit on your account? Well, Rimuru and Landy are the two highest gear scores. So. so overall, okay, is there maybe some other that are close up though, or like also high up? Hey, Ravi has pretty good gear. She's not quite at that level. Okay, we'll get there. We're, we're going down. All right, next up we got Crow. Yeah, Crow um, has fallen off a bit. I guess just because it feels like there's better options at the moment. Um, you know, you can take FCC or you can take Garmin. Um, but Crow is still really good. Um, part of the reason I think he's fallen off is because, like, a Ravi with injury and stuff like that make yeah. him a little less impactful. Sure. Um, but again, in the right setting, he's still really good. So it's definitely still worth having him built up. Exactly. Couldn't have said better. Okay. Acid up next. Oh. And we went for Mega Speed. Still got, still got some damage. Um, yeah. but mainly contester, I'm assuming. Yeah. So he, I, you know, I'm a big fan of building characters to do a specific job very well. Yeah. Um, I had an ACID or I had him built at 300 speed with a lot more damage and it wasn't, um, as good for my account because it was hard to use him to contest. So I use this one to basically contest squishy targets and having him at 310 is really nice because even if they bring an imprint, I can usually ignore it and still have speed. I love that. I'm definitely getting that kind of gist from your account. All, a lot of these units are specialized for a single role, and since you have so many different units, you kind of just bust out that exact one when you need it, right? Unless I forget about them, yeah. Which is actually an understated problem, I think, Mace, when you have so many units and you have limited time on the draft. But that's why I was try I was kind of trying to hint that maybe you got you 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 put a lot of thought in the drafts, and you got to remember, like, if you have a hundred tools, and you have thirty seconds to pick, right, Mace? <laughs> Sometimes yeah, exactly. you may forget, right? Okay. Next up is Spec Tenny, and she's still on Lifesteal. Talk to us about that, because a lot of people, I think, were saying um, the trend now is to shift her back to speed. Yeah, you can. Um, I, I still like Lifesteal. Um, I think maybe if I decide to start playing more aggressively, I would, I would shift her over to speed with more damage. Yeah. But I still like being able to do the standard kind of slow S Tenny draft, and Lifesteal is a lot safer for that. Right. Do you, um, are you one of the players that kind of picks her fairly often? Like you pre ban Bellion and then she'd be like an important part of the draft? I, I pre ban Bellion 99% of games last season. And yeah, I would, I would pick her fairly early. Okay. Well, like the gear um, is very nice. Yeah. Part of the reason for that was because I abhorred playing against Violet and Rem, and Spectenny was one of the best answers to them. Right. You couldn't draft her if Bellion was on the table. So do you think that's going to change this season, Mace, your pre ban? Hmm. It might. Um, I think that Violet and Rem are less prevalent yeah, now that for the, sure. Uh, yeah, you know, other units are out like Rimuru. So I could maybe consider banning AOL instead. Okay. We're gonna see her soon. Next up, we got Kekwick as you as you call them, Mediator Kuwerik, and uh, Mace. I'll just let you say for this guy's insane, isn't he? Yeah, he's really strong. As for your build, you kind of opted for a also very very. It's a fast build, right? Even as a standard player? Yeah, I think that... So I, I tried him at 
220 speed with crit damage and mm -hmm. it was okay uh but the damage for the investment wasn't really worth it you know you were putting a lot of stats to you know get like three or four thousand damage instead of like one thousand damage on an attack and yeah it just didn't feel worth it okay. so speeding him up and making him much tankier felt more impactful um I, I really like the flexibility of him on this build because he can fit in aggro and in standard drafts and he does really well in both yeah he's you know, so he's speed tuned to opsig um you take opsig you know cowrick into an F early fcc pick and it's kind of a predicament you know there's not a ton of answers to that right your opsig was like 250 correct yeah all right and mace they just noticed your gold youtube if you haven't seen yet look how much gold mace is rocking here we'll ask him about that at the end all right next up we got aol and this is a it's a i would say it's a standard aol build um just with nice gear of course like all your units but nothing like um not mega slow not mega fast although 272 is still very good for that bulk but overall though mace you just you just kind of use her in um when she looks good in terms of debuffing yeah i don't honestly i can't say that i pick her that often um she has some rng in that you know her debuffs don't always land and that can feel bad um i i feel like other people prioritize her more than i do yeah it's, and mainly for you it's not because she's not a strong unit it's just that rng aspect you prefer more reliable units correct and, and it's also when you take her it's it's going to change i guess the comp that you're playing and i i don't feel like she does super well in a slower draft i mean i guess i'd have to like slow her all the way down yeah to um you know like 200 or something and put her on counter or whatever but um, i'm not really interested in doing that and i think she's still really really strong against uh the right type of draft in standard with this build okay um, and it's nice to kind of force them to speed contest her makes sense all right next up guys he said this is also a very geared unit let's check out the apocalypse ravi okay mace that's definitely some very premium gear my man um 24 guys it's a standard a ravi right on speed but with about like uh three quarter three k or more health than i think a lot of us so Definitely a very, very good APOC Ravi. I mean, do you need to... I don't think you need to say too much on her, right, Mace? Just an insanely, insanely powerful unit at the moment. Yeah, they really overtuned her. Um, it is what it is. So I guess some units always going to be overtuned relative to others. Yeah. And I think she, like um, ML Kawerk and Rimu, she, you can just use her in like a bunch of different drafts, viable first pick, right? And I think that's usually the sign that they overtuned the unit. Um, yeah, that's what makes her so strong is she fits into so many drafts and she doesn't have that many counters. So you can pick her early and then flex into whatever's best for you afterwards. And then, so Mace, you gave those kind of units, right? Your best gear, because obviously yes. they come out the most. And yeah, all right. Well, it looks very good. Any um thoughts on other builds? I'm sure you might get some questions on... Um, do you think this is kind of just overall speed you like the most? Do you think counter is viable? I think counter is not super viable i mean obviously it's still fine like it's still a good unit and you're gonna have a lot of gear score on her so it'll do okay mm -hmm. but i think you're handicapping yourself um if people notice that she's on counter and she's slow she'll just get ignored and then all that happens is you have an a robbie that's turn cycling more slowly okay makes sense and then even yours um you got the health to kind of just even if they focus her she's still really good all right next up we got researcher carrot who has some, um, also some very nice gear. Actually, yeah, she's this is... off a lot. Okay, but you oh, still invested very nice gear. Usually she's on book. She's usually on book. Is this for Advent? On... Or yeah. Something? Okay, that makes sense. So you're normally on book, right? That... But, um, in terms of falling off, Mace, how often would you say you still pick her? Uh, one out of 25 to 50 games. And those 25 to 50 games, is it when you're, when, what's her role in your vast amount of, like, toolkit kind of account? Uh, she could delete a landy if they don't have FCC. She can um, be good into certain fire bruisers, like if they're picking a Lencia or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's kind of where you'd want to look to take her. Okay. Looks good, man. And I mean, it, it's got lots of bulk, enough attack, and uh, you even have some crown if it's intentional or not, and then some effectiveness, a lot of effectiveness actually for some carrots. Okay, Tempest Surin, speaking of falling off mace. Anything she's on pretty uh, garbage gear. Um, I haven't drafted her in ages. Just because, like, she's just... and There's a lot of AoE. She just has a lot of weaknesses at the moment, right? Yeah, she also doesn't do that much damage. Like, she needs to proc Gab, and if she doesn't, she hits, like, a noodle. Um, and, yeah, it just feels like there's a lot of ways that she gets punished. Okay. 
All right, next up we got Tea Time. Who, Mace, if you don't, if you would mind spending just a little bit extra time because she's coming out, I think, in less than a week. So, how do you feel she falls, Mace, as a as a high level PvP player? Tea Time is still viable and is still a threat. Uh, she's a very scary unit to see on the other side of the field. Mm -hmm. She's a unit that you absolutely have to have answers built, um, or you can get abused by her. The problem is that they've released more answers for her, and so she isn't, you know, the unstoppable threat that she used to be. But if you don't have her, I think she's still worth getting. Okay, I think I agree to that. That's a that's a very that's a very good answer. We need her if you do. It's mostly though, Mace, right? If you if you want to play PvP um, at higher levels, because she one comes out not too often, because like main control is not really a comp as much, and then second, as you mentioned, there's a lot of answers to her. But the fact that she is a must answer unit. Um, if you're a PvP player, right, you would suggest them picking her up? For sure, yeah. She's a unit that you can fifth pick, and she'll be a must ban. And the more of those you have, the better. Got it. Okay, moving on. Last Rider Crowd. This is one I think Apex said is Copium, a.k.a. he's not good at all. Do you have different thoughts? No, he's complete Copium. Really? Do yeah. So the Veritas boys LRK aren't a fan was, of LRK. Um, was very strong before all the Soul Weavers got popular. Yeah. But now made Chloe's a thing, and he skill threes, and then made Chloe just heals it, and it's like it never happened. So uh, my big brain idea to make LR Crow uh, great again is to put him on injury set. I think that would actually be pretty good. Hmm. Uh, the reason why is because his health scaling is actually really garbage above 23,000. Um, I remember when he first came out, I was looking at different builds and trying to figure out like how to maximize his damage. Yeah. And once you get to 23,000 health, it felt like the damage didn't really go up that much, or it was hard to get it to go up. Sure. So I think you, I think you could build him on injury at like 200 speed or something like that, and he might be better. So I kind of want to try it. Okay. Have the injury gear. Well, we'll stay tuned for that. And Mace, you do stream, right? So if you do end up trying that build, they can check you out there. Um, for sure. Yeah. 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 We'll get to that at the end. Okay. Next up, Falconer Clurry. Um, um, she was like point? my gem in season three. In season three, but that was like three seasons ago now, right? Yeah. It was. How about nowadays? Um, she is a nice pocket pick to have. Uh, every so often, she is really good. There are some people that still pick her high up on the ladder, though. Right. Um, I, I think the problem with Falcon or Cleary right now is the meta is so fast, uh, and all the units are so impactful in the beginning. You get off one skill three, and then the game's kind of over. Sure. And Falcon or Cleary is a unit that you want to grind out a long match with. And, you know, so you're getting multiple S3s. She's still really good into teams that let you do that. There's just not many of those teams running around. Got it. Okay. Next up, Bazaar. Yeah, he's, um, I don't really pick him very often. He's also, uh, yeah, we rarely see him nowadays. Is that also just a lot more, like, cleanse units? Um, or I guess powerful cleanse units and the fact that, uh, exactly, I guess what he yeah. used to be good with before. So even, you have him on Crown though, Mace. When you were using him, was he on Crown or Book? Um, I had him at like, you know, the standard 270 book. Okay, and, so this build you know, is something different. Yeah, honestly, I think if I ever pull another one, I'm just going to make one of those two because you can make that with no mola essentially, and it's fine. Sure. Um, how, like, I'll just ask the question, how often does this guy come out in your, let's say the last season you played? Um, one out of 50 games. So also very, and very rare. The only time I would draft him, because he's so slow, is against specific players that I know will not speed contest him mm -hmm. and that he can, you know, debuff a lot. Okay. And that's the that's why we were running the crown. Got it. Yeah. Next up, Trozet. Talk to me about the Trozet. I'm I think I'm gonna build one up very soon. I've been saying that for a while, but maybe you can sell me on him a little more, or maybe you'll make me I, I not want to build really him. Good. You do? Okay. No, I think he's really good, yeah. Um when um, do you he, bring him out? Um he's a unit that's really good into control and cleave teams. Um and you could put him on Guide, you could put him on Holy Sack. Um, so he has a lot of different build options, but I think having him around 230 speed is really nice because he will CR push quite a bit when they do anything to you. Mm -hmm. And Guide makes it really hard to debuff him. Interesting. Um, guide is your, you can, your choice. Yeah, okay. just, yeah, then you can just cleanse your other cleanser or, so you, or whatever. You said Mace against Control and Cleave. What's your favorite pairing with him? Uh, he works well with Maid. He works well with Apoc Ravi. Other Revivers. Revivers. Okay. Got it. Interesting. I might have to try that. Okay. Next up, Maid Chloe. Speaking of Revivers. And this um, is... So yeah, Maid Chloe is obviously like a really strong unit. Um, I like having her on a Whoa. Build. Yeah. Mace, I think this gear is very, very good. I know you're, you're going to be a little humble about it, but is this gear insane? 
I think it's good. It, it's hard to compare Soul Weavers and everyone else though because they well, don't have. Yeah. Uh, they're not like Bruisers where they can get good percentage subs on all the right sided gear, right? So I think her gear score is like 400 or something like that. And you know, if you had a Bruiser with 400 gear score, that's okay, but it's nothing special. Yeah, I, think that's I understand that part. For a Soul Weaver. I think if we compare to other Soul Weavers though and gearing, you ha you kind of have um, very high ER. Yeah. Very bulky. Um, well, I wouldn't say very, but like for having that much ER, I, I think the bulk is really good. And the speed is still decent. Is this kind of where you yeah. like her at? 209 speed? Yeah, I mean, she's speed tuned for standard play. So, you know, Landy's 200. A lot of my other bruisers are 200. Okay. Well, man, I think this is just like a very, very... Like you said, standard. It's a very standard May, just with some very premier stats. Like your ER, I think will catch like the people that are kind of getting away with 150 effectiveness, right? I think a lot of times, exactly. Mace, you are definitely like covering that. Okay. Next up, Sage Ball. Uh, he, don't uh... draft him very often. Um, I drafted him once last season, and it was the final game on the last day, and he won. So nice. I guess he's a must build. How do you how do you feel uh, about him versus like Caesarea Cleave? I guess he could be okay. You probably want to build him a lot faster, though. Sure. What is your primary usage for him? Just against uh, aggressive cleave players. Aggressive cleave, not necessarily the CCR. Okay. Aggressive yeah. cleave players. We got some ER. Very bulky. On proof, yeah. Damn, that's... Uh, yeah, very bulk. All right, Alencia Mace. I hope we got some. We've thought about her a little bit. Coming I up. really liked Alencia in Season 2. Yeah, I think, I think everyone did. She's garbage now. Really? So you don't think the E was enough to um, make no. her any better? No, so the reason why Alencia was so strong is because she had really good health scaling, and Frenzy was designed in a way to make health scaling stronger as the game went on. Mm -hmm. And additionally, it had the game was a lot slower in that Frenzy model, so games did go long. Uh, and so when the games would go long, her damage would go sky high, and she would just start deleting things. But now the opposite happens. Games don't go that long, and she doesn't do anything. Right. So all the players that are kind of predicting she's going to pop off now with the EE Mace, you think they're not? They they're probably a little misguided because you're saying the meta. I, I you, think you said it a few RNG times, right? Because she has to she has to proc Mind's Eye, and then she has to Death Break. Um, mine never does that. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> RNG enjoyers, Shadow Y'all, I think I may. If I'm being honest, I think I'm a, a bit of an RNG enjoyer, but that's mostly because I I have to. I think to some to some extent. All right, next up is Ruel. As a standard player, does she get picked a lot for you, Mace? Yeah, um, I, I think I pick her a decent amount, maybe one twenty. I think your stock has been going up. Compared, like, so we keep talking about like season two and three, where she was maybe or the older season, season one and two, I think, where she was picked like. Always, right? And then she kind of made a huge dip, and then now people are picking her a little bit up again. Where do you bust her out, um, Mace? Uh, she can be really good against uh, certain types of aggro. Um, you know, like with Cools or Charles, if you have like FCC, her, and A-Ravi, um, unless they really gear check you, that's a lot to get through. Um, she's also sometimes good into Rimuru if you don't have buffs on your team. Um, you know, she's not, like, made, uh, where she's giving everyone a revive buff and then Rumor steals it. Uh, so she can work well there. Um, and then she's always just going to be really strong into teams that have a lot of single target, you know, big S3s. Um, because sometimes it'll take the enemy, you know, two or more big powerful S3s to kill a tanky unit. Yeah. And then you trade that for one S3 on Ruel, and it's a good trade for you. Okay. I like it. And then single target is big in this meta, right? So... For those reasons, yeah, she's looking yeah, solid. no, I think she's good. Okay. Oh wait, real fast. Uh, Touch of Rakos compared to, I mean, you have very high defense. Is that kind of why you're not going for like Water's Origin, or you just like Touch in your comps? I think Water's Origin is good on her. Um, I think Touch is also very good because one of her weaknesses is that she has trouble dealing with kind of AOE and sustained damage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think Touch shores that up, and she's tanky enough that she doesn't really die super fast without Water's Origin. So I okay, like, I like Touch. Got it. Momo, this is PVE. Yeah, I don't even know what Momo's on. <laughs> okay, I mean, guys, I think he may threw on some gear, but I think this is better than a lot of Momo still know. All right, Flitica. Uh, Flitica is a premier fifth pick unit. Premier fifth pick unit, so still viable, just in that very last spot. Yeah, um, so she's fast enough to outspeed any type of standard shenanigans, right? Um, and she's also fast enough to outspeed a lot of aggressive players that are trying to play at like 250, 260. 
Um, and oh. so she's good in those scenarios. Um, she has guiding light, so she won't get sniped by Acid. Yeah. Um, and against like the right draft, she'll just wreck it right by resetting an important hero. Another one in the Mace's very big toolkit, guys. The fifth pick, Flitica. So you highlighted versus aggressive players that aren't mega fast or in like the 240, 260 range. And then still, yeah. you said also good just for standard players who are maybe just, you know, picking every units from like two, 220, right? She'll take over. Yeah, when you draft a lot, you start, I think, kind of uh, seeing how people are trying to force the game to be played at a certain tempo. Um, and you'll notice that based on, you know, like when they start taking their speed contest units and stuff. Yeah. And you have to evaluate, given, you know, if they're playing at like this tempo and that'll take turn one from me, do I have enough picks to, to respond to that and change the tempo? So can I flex and go faster than them and still have a viable team? And if you can, then something like Flitic is good. If you can, then you have to tank down or, you know, you see what I'm saying. Mace, you, I think, are the epitome. I'm sure there'll be others that we'll meet eventually, but you're the epitome of every unit can be good if you give them enough gear, if you understand where and how we want to gear. Like, I think a lot of people kind of... Uh, maybe wrote off Flitica because she's not she's no longer like a 300 speed first pick like cleaver unit right um yeah. but you're kind of just showing every unit can be used as a tool if you gear them for your count but i'll say this mace i'm afraid of that kind of meta because there's very few players that can pull this off i think you're one of the few just with enough gear with enough knowledge and enough like resources to have all these tools available but it's so strong that seems really yeah. really insane um if you guys fight, there's, Mace, you guys, know, there's a lot of players out there, and there's a big spread of you know people and Emperor and Legend. So yeah, and then you kind of just have enough tools for every answer. All right, Dark Corvus though, is this just because Veritas is still? Uh, you guys are still taking Guild Wars pretty seriously. I, I don't think we're allowed to ungear our Dark Corvus. So we'll have to check with Platy. <laughs> we'll need an official statement. Yikes! But overall, outside of Guild Wars, um, Mace, so do you think this guy needs a buff to be more than just a Guild War bot? I don't really want him to be anything more than that, so I think he's fine as he is. <laughs> okay, all right. Fair enough, man. Next up, uh, Inferno Kawazu. Yeah, so this was um, one of the few heroes that was hyped up before released as being amazing, right? Yes. And, and then he kind of wasn't. But most people, when they see a new unit, uh, they're like, oh, this is going to be garbage. And like 90% of the time, they're right. But uh, Kawazu is like the opposite of that. I guess AOL is the exception where everyone knew she'd be broken and then she was. Yeah. Um, so I guess he just doesn't feel super impactful because he'll S3 once and then he doesn't do anything. Um, I built him fast because I wanted to try to use him to counter Cesarea Cleave. Mm -hmm. um, I thought was most Cesarea's are 240 speed and he CR pushes a little bit more than Cesarea does. So if I build him at like 250 or so, then he should steal the turn from her. The problem is if you get stripped, she still bombs everyone, which is kind of awkward. Sure. I do think Mace, um, um, he had a spot maybe after his release where there were there were comps where he would shine, but now you're saying, at least in your testing, and you did give him enough gear and stuff to test, right now you don't think he has a spot even in those counter style roles at all? You have to identify a draft where you, you need to trade a one-to-one -to, -one to win, right? Mm. Because that's what he does. He yeah. kills something, but then he's just going to die and do nothing. So if there's one problematic unit on the enemy side that you have to get rid of, then he's the one, right? And that, and to you, that kind of unit is not really good. At least for you, right? Like one in a hundred games, one in two hundred games, something sure. like that. All right, guys, that's Mace's take on the Kawazu. I like that, Amelia. Uh, she's absurd. She's really strong. <sighs> um, Mace, how good would you say her gear is? I think it's pretty good. It's pretty close to the maid gear. I think just you know she's faster. She is fast, guys. She has bulk, and she still has um with this guardian ice crystal. About 140 ER. Mm, yeah. Very, very nice, Mace. So, yeah, just insane, right? Insane unit? Nothing else really needs yeah. to be said? No, I think people are pretty familiar with how Amelia operates at this point. Got it. Okay. Next up, Dien. Look like Dien still... is still... Yeah, sorry, go I ahead. I think Dien is still really good. Um, she's not as um, prevalent as Amelia is, and, and I think they're actually pretty different units. Um, I think a lot of people saw how good Amelia was, and they, they just started taking Amelia in all scenarios when they needed a Soul Weaver. Yeah. And I don't think that's really appropriate. I think DN can provide a lot more sustain and kind of like a long-term win than Amelia can. Um, Amelia creates an absurd amount of tempo, 
and usually that's enough to kind of you know wash away the opponent like a tidal wave but mm -hmm. if they're able to survive that then they win dn is someone who is going to take the game long and um basically just out sustain the enemy i agree so i think a lot of people compare the two like one to one meaning if amelia was just a straight up better dn why ever bring dn but you're saying there are yeah. scenarios where dn is still very good and yeah i think exactly. i agree to that especially because also right mace a lot of times if you're two players are playing standard um if one of the soivers is banned you know sometimes you your choices get limited a little bit exactly okay senya this is one also uh, the veritas guys i think have a lot of different opinions on senya what about you well rikaza really likes her but he also has like 550 gear score on his so <laughs> yeah five I, I think rikaza just likes good gear and who wouldn't okay uh for you though it seems like you didn't really like she has an underforged helmet here have you been trying her out i haven't really tried her out she's not molded um she seemed like a hero that looked kind of fun to play so i thought about it but yeah um i've been burned by mullain a unit in the past you know that like didn't do anything and then sure. i didn't have mullas when i needed them so um i've been kind of waiting to see if she'll become relevant yeah i think there was a period in the meta where she was very good and that was before the um the slime collab when rem and violet were running around everywhere and I yes. think he was actually a pretty good answer to them okay uh, and so I, I almost pulled the trigger and then we were saved by rimaru so <laughs> saved or doomed but yeah i know what you mean all oh, right we were, we were saved by rimaru we were saved by because the rem violet uh plague in your opinion was way worse than him 100 percent worse got it okay well well guys if you remember let's loop back to that one here mace's thoughts on the the meta shifts uh fire robbie Still a really strong unit, uh, but not one you can take early. So you have to take her late. Um, she's a very powerful bruiser, mm -hmm. um, you know, but difficult to take into REM, right? Sure. Uh, difficult uh, back when Kisei was popular. Kisei could cause problems for her. Um, so I think that you can take Ravi, uh, like when the opponent has taken AOL. Um, really? One, yeah, one way that you can draft into an early pick AOL is to take a bunch of high sustained bruisers that don't rely on buffs and ravi is kind of a premier one of those you still like fifth picker or fourth picker um but she's good in that type of scenario can you elaborate a little bit on that may so like apoc and then fire uh ravi and then who else would you say is like those sustaining bruisers those are the two it's nice if you can get specter as well and then other things that can help you sustain without using buffs um so even like a maid just because even if maid is silenced the she still heal. heals sure okay yeah, exactly um uh, how I about Bruiser? Lilius works well with Yeah, that. I was going to say the Lilius. Okay. Yeah, I think, guys, a lot of people were sad that Ravi went from, like, being a first pick, like, monster. Maybe this was, like, a season and a half ago already. Maybe two seasons. But um, if you have the gear, right, Mace, to, to leave her on some... Because she still, I think, needs decent to good gear. Because she's that unit yeah. where if you don't... If she dies too early, she doesn't have enough damage, you're going to be missing some stuff. But if you have the she gear to keep on before. her... She was better before. I nerfed her because you don't pick her very often now. Sure. Um... But yeah, I think it is a fair complaint uh, to point out that Ravi was not relevant for very long mm -hmm. because people invest quite a bit, you know, into characters like that. You know, they really need to be plus 15 to shine. So that's a lot of investment to not get much play out of. Uh, agreed. Okay. Next up is Meru. And this is, I mean, Mace, I keep saying speaking of, but for someone that a lot of us invested big on, how often do you pick her? Um pretty much never <laughs> it's hard nowadays right um but you yeah. did plus 15 her so she would she did have a yeah. spot where she was very good um yeah yeah she was good in season three um, mace i've been saying this spicy take and it's kind of biased because i think both looks wise and just you know i, I really like her but do you think amero needs a buff i think she needs maybe an adjustment would be a better way to put it i think she has like powerful parts in her kit but they need to rework her a bit or something because she's not really relevant right now you heard it here first guys mace agrees that she needs massive buffs i'm kidding yes maybe just <laughs> an adjustment or something i but def definitely something because she's an ml5 that a lot of people invested a lot in and plus 15 as well and she's just very hard to draft right now like she's dizzy levels of um just can't use her right it's very hard yeah okay gp um i don't really draft this gp whoa maybe sort of comment. once yeah, maybe once in a blue moon if I really needed a speed, or I mean an attack buffer at 250. But um, he was a lot more... He, his gear, he's just kind of holding spare gear right now. Okay. Uh, but I had a build that was similar to this uh, at like 260 that I used a lot in Season 3. 
Okay, makes sense. Just not, you don't use him as much uh, nowadays. Crimson Armin, though, I think um, as a standard player, right, Mace? We use her a lot. Yeah, she's um, an amazing tank because she doesn't oh really have God. counters. Yeah. So you can um, you can pick her early and not worry about LQC and stuff like that. I think this might be the tankiest Carmen we've seen. Uh, Mace, what do you think about the counter build? I think it's okay. Um, I don't really think you're gaining a ton. I, I think it's viable, though. Um, I would rather just have more stats. And your stats are very high. Okay. 175, that's interesting. That's kind of... Um, what's your slowest unit that you're going after? Uh, probably Spec Tenny and Remnant Violet at like 185. Okay. Makes sense. All right. I mean, nothing else to be said about Crimson Armin, guys. This is a crazy Crimson Armin. I think this is the only pair of Hell Raid boots that I've ever seen roll well. Uh, Mace, would you ever play Cleave? Um, sometimes, yeah. Uh, mostly in preseason, though. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't think I have the breadth of, like, cleave units to yeah. really make it work. There's some people in chat, Mace, I think, that want you to play some cleave this season, maybe. Um, Iceria PvE? Yeah, I think Expos. Sure. Flan? I think um, for a Mace account, she definitely gets busted out here and there, right? Yeah, she is nice to pick as a speed contest. Um, I kind of don't know who else to put this gear on. Um, it was kind of funny. I actually put this gear on Viseria for a little while. Um, so she was around 300 speed and it was really amazing because cleavers would not assume she would take the first turn and then she did yeah. and completely wrecked them. Uh, but then a few people figured it out and pre banned her against me and that was sad. Um, and then other units came out that make that not very viable anymore. Um, cause you know, now we have like, uh, cat quick and stuff. You, you can't sure. really use her. Okay. So she had a one time, like moment of glory for you because you built it in a specific way but nowadays not not seen as much yeah i think um flan though is really strong in the right scenarios so you know if you can pick her towards the end and um outspeed and you know like buff up a uh, lqc or an opsig or something like that and just delete them sure it's okay. nice judge kisei mace she's on the banner right now and she's looking glorious in that skin but yeah she looks amazing yeah but kit -wise, i wish i mace... say anything else good about her though literally just looks that's all uh mace another one just your quick take does she need buffs yeah she doesn't really do anything right now <laughs> fair guys you heard it all right i think we're all in agreement some people are a little scared about what they might give her like apex would say apex was saying mace i don't know if you caught it be careful smilegate what you give her because i will go crazy if you give her anything uh extra but yeah she definitely needs something because she's not seeing any play wait is this a second gp yes and they're both plus 15 they might be. All right, Mace, explain yourself. So the so, first one, was that your entire thoughts or just that build? Uh, I, I think GP is still viable right now. And sure. so this this build, I think I, I will draft on occasion when I uh, have somebody who's taking a bunch of AOE threats. Yeah. Um, You know, and I want the CR push and the attack buff. And I think he's good in that scenario. So I wanted him tanky for that. Um, and I think 200 speed is fine. And he does like enough damage to do chip damage and stuff and be viable in that slot. Um, I had two GPs because back in season three when I was GP cleaving, I wanted this as an option. And then I also wanted the 261 if I was going to go aggressive. Of course. I, I think the thing is like uh, GP had a time where he was definitely having two of them was crazy because he was so good. But nowadays, right, you barely even use the one, let alone having two, correct? correct? Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's no reason to have two anymore. I, I guess you could put the other one on a high effectiveness build with Champion's Trophy, um, if you wanted to meme. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, is this the first Lilith we've seen? She's only plus three? Yeah, there's another one at plus 15. This one... <laughs> oh, I see it, I see it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so this one um, I, I just used <laughs> for I think it was Hollow Trials. This is a um, PvE Lilith for Hollow Trials. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but well, I had a similar build. She was tankier than this with, I think, 150 res yeah. um, that I would pick into flurries um, because you don't really need molas for that. If she's, you know, like you just put her on Aureus or on Adamant Shield, mm -hmm. um, she'll just be a tank and she's in a support role. So the damage molas don't really do a lot. Um, and so it was fine for that. Okay. That was back when Flurry was more popular. And then I also wanted to have the, the Bruiser Lilius as well. Got it. All right. DJB Mace. This guy's, uh, I think, I think he's invested he in, buffs. he needs buffs. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, I, I don't think any of us can recall last time we actually saw him a decent amount. All right. Another yeah, one. He, he, he cleanses, but he is so squishy. Like his stats are just garbage is the problem. Uh, well, that's one problem. The other is 
he doesn't do anything after he S3s. Yep. And his S3 is just a cleanse, so. There's just better units for that role now. And he's, yep. okay. Violet, so Mace, you mentioned that this and Rem, are they your most hated units? Uh, they're my, yeah, I mean, Bellion also has a special place sure. because I think I think Bellion legitimately ruined the game. I think she was, oh. I think she's like the worst unit that they've ever released. Um, but Bellion like enabled these two, which is what makes her even worse than them. Okay. <laughs> but luckily he's, uh, do you think the main reason he's being seen less and less is because it's mostly Rimu? Rimuru? Yeah, I think Rimuru is a big reason as to why. Okay. Um, in terms of just the stat line on the Violet though, very nice. Um, yeah, yeah, looks solid. Cerise. Um, so Cerise is just on kind of like backup speed gear. Is, yeah, I was going to say, like last, Mace, pick. for you, I feel like uh, you could make her way better. So she's just, she's on budget gear right now? Yeah, pretty much. I, I guess if I really wanted to draft her a lot, I would give her flans gear and she'd probably be like 310 or something like that or maybe even faster. Okay, okay. Here's the second Lilius, boys. Um, so Bruiser, right? Is this versus AOL mostly? Yeah, pretty much exclusively against AOL. Um... The thought here is that you want her to do a little bit of chip damage, so she's contributing, and then you also want her to be tanky enough to help you sustain through the fight. Yeah. Mace, remember at the beginning, uh, I think when we were talking in the beginning, you're like, my dog may be barking during the the chat. Can y'all, anyone hear um, Nilla? Is she making noise? Can y'all hear it? She's crying right now. Let me just message my uh, fiance I think real I did hear. fast. I heard, I heard one whine. Uh, are you home? Anyways, Mace, yeah, let me move on to the next unit. Can you take? She's crying. Okay. Uh, next up is D Lilibet. Speaking of buffs, Mace, any use? Nope. Copium. She needs something. Yeah. Don't she even bother. Okay. Chat. I mean, I don't think anyone really is worried about that. BM yeah, Haste, though. Have... Sorry. Yeah. You're gonna say something about? Oh no, Lilibet? I'm just saying like people have talked a lot about why she's bad. So. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, BM Haste, though, is insane, right? Still good. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, I think if he's a, one of those characters that if you don't have on your account, you definitely notice it. So, Mace, can you kind of um, highlight for me? Because I have him. I think a lot of people have him. But in terms of, I think, standard play, right? If we don't have enough damage to justify bringing or like, do we bust him out versus maids? When are you bringing him out? Well, you can bring him out any time that the enemy has revive on their team mm -hmm. and also targets that you are confident you can kill in short order. So if uh, the maid has maid, but then they also have a bunch of tanks, uh, I don't know how good BM haste is in that scenario. Right. Um, you, you have to get that cycle started. You know exactly. I mean? You yep. kill one, and then you skill three again, and you kill one. Okay. Just very high health and very high defense. Nice. Okay. Next up, Champ Z. Uh, I mean, this is another one I don't think we need to talk too much about, right? Hardly no, seen anymore on, in RTA. He just is on gear for um, Actually, I'm sure the haste raid. Fast. Okay. So just raid, you don't bust him out anymore in PvP, correct? Not really. He's very selfish. Um, you know, you think about all the cleansers that also give immunity, and you're like, well, I can't use that with Champ Z, so... Got it. True. All right, Belly and his most hated unit, boys. Counter build. Um, so since you ban her all the time, right, Mace? She doesn't see much play, but if you were to bring her, this is your preferred build? Yeah, so I've tried her on injury... It's okay. I think it's viable. Um, but there's a particular play style you have to adhere to if you use Injury Bellion because people will just focus the Injury Bellion and then she doesn't really do anything. What is that play um, style? Um, like bringing a Reviver with it? I, I guess. I, I mean, honestly, I tried it and didn't find a ton of success with it, so I may not be the best person to ask. It didn't feel very impactful to me. That's kind of what I'm Maybe my account with. was not tuned properly to take advantage of it. Okay. I found in a lot of the games that I played, the injury was completely irrelevant, right? Like, there were units that had taken injury damage, but then all their health was below where the injury would be anyways. Yeah. So it was like, what was the point of that? The, the only time I think injury is really useful is if you're going into HP scaling units like a Ravi and Crow, because then it's, you know, it's making those units less uh, impactful. They're not doing as much damage. The horse doesn't hit as hard. One um, more thing I'll say just for like in sake of or in defense of injury, it's like when people bust out like half counters or like a Rowana, we feel a lot better in, instead if we were on like counter set, right? But 
I agree. Some people overall. say that, and, and that that might be their experience. But for you, I've taken you didn't her find into that... yeah. and the CR push was just too much. Like I just got overrun okay. by the CR push alone. Like the injury just didn't seem to do enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. But overall, just you said she ruins the she ruined the game. <laughs> I, I think she did. Yeah. Um, she prevented or she took away the one answer to a bad part of the game, and uh, that was Spectenny. Like you, the only thing Belly encountered. 100% with Spectenny. Um, the other units were all still like, you know, I guess you could still work around her uh -huh. more to a degree. But um, by getting rid of Spectenny, let me rephrase that. She impacted Spectenny the most. Got it. Um, you could just not take her. Like Landy could still hide behind like FCC shields and it was still okay. And Landy still got to skill three. Okay. Spectenny just couldn't do anything. Sure, sure. Fair enough. All right. Um, Furious PVE, Mort, any quick comments on him? I wish he was good. But for you, not good right now. No. Okay. Oh, QC. Definitely good, right? Uh, she, yeah, she's really strong. Do you think she's only good right now, though, because of how good APOC is? Yes. Okay. Pretty much only because of that. Makes sense. Um, like, you'll notice that LQC hasn't, like, really changed much, um, and she was nowhere to be seen before APOC, right? Sure. And then... Uh, still good into FCC, I guess. I do like, uh, though, you're on the Hellcutter. APOC is the main reason. The typical Hellcutter build still good bulk and then your speed's actually pretty nice all right but definitely just a normal lqc right mace nothing yeah I, th I think that's the damage you want to shoot for is 4k 300 4k 300 guys but also maintaining some bulk right because as a standard player sometimes she may just die if it's too squishy exactly okay that's very i think that's kind of hard to do though all right a lot um any usage 30 spares breath uh he he's on green expo i think okay no, no RTA play though, right? Zero. Got it. Ray, anything from him? Uh, I used him at the end of season three a couple times. I think some people back did. Back when there were no better answers to F10. Okay. <laughs> but nowadays he's been non-existent? Correct. Got it. Yeah, he, he's like DJB light. So, okay, yeah, yeah, I get what you mean by that. All right. Charlotte? Um, She's really good. Uh, she's fallen off a bit because of you know the problems with AOE at the moment. Yeah. Um, but still strong. You just can't take her as often. Um, Charlotte is a frustrating unit because she kind of came out of nowhere at the end of season four and completely wrecked me, and I didn't have Mullas to build her. Um, <laughs> but she's she's good now. Yeah, she's she. So at when people were picking up her a lot, she was a mo like very very strong. Um, but nowadays, yeah, the AOE, I would also say like AOL, like unbuffable, just really kind of ruins her day. So exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. AOL is, makes it really hard to play. Seen a lot less, but still very strong. Right, Mace? Mm-hmm. SSB. A unit you uh, didn't have originally. Like... Yes, I have her now. But um, so, she... I, Mace, let me just say, I think a lot of end, end game players, and hopefully maybe you're different because you're more standard than some, but a lot of them just never even pick her ever still. Is it the same for you? I think you can like fifth pick her on rare occasions. But it's for you specifically, really Mace, how often would yeah. you have you actually played her? Once every 50 to 75 games. Okay. Yeah, that sounds right. But if you didn't have the mass amount of units you had, she's still a good fifth pick in, in the right spot, right? If you need AoE, yeah, she can, you know, fill that role. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to mention about her? That about her? Um, no, not really. Okay. Fighter Maya? Copium? Yeah, Copium. YouTube, I, I mean, we've mentioned every review, but Copium basically means, uh, yeah, you're just coping. I think Apex had a really good definition for it. Make sure y'all check that one out. Uh, Arby. Oh, wait, it's the second Arby, right? Degen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Degen. And then both Arby's, though, don't see much play anymore? Uh, not really. I, I think you can still pick Degen Arby uh, again once in a blue moon. Blue Rem kind of replaced him. But yeah. There are some scenarios where you probably rather have the degen rb like if they have a rimaru for example um it can be nice to have the degen one because you know like uh ram will just get one shot okay um, rb will come back sure sure um kawan I'm, i think this is like katie's maybe or some some pv stuff yeah she's on the katie's team got it uh tama pve ammo can yep. any anything besides copium uh once in 500 games you will pick him and he will be glorious <laughs> okay so basically copium yeah a little bit all right not just i think apex said you just he needs so many specific stats sometimes he'll be good sometimes he's not he's just not worth really investing into correct um no i mean this was invested into from way back when 
so I, I already had him. Right, so I mean... Might as well put gear on him. Sure, but nobody I, else is going to use that gear. But even then, right, so you invested him way back when, but now, like, you don't give him too much thought, because one in 500 games, right, you, like, barely worth busting out? Yeah, it's more of... I, I'd say he's worth having because it's a moral victory if you ever get to draft him <laughs> and you win. It is actually huge. Guys, if you lose them, okay, and a lot of times it's 1v4, and you leave him at, like... 5% health every time and he yeah he crushes you uh, you yeah. know what I like that take okay second SSB and this is one shot wyvern um yeah just PVE PV, uh, PV I, SSB yeah. sure yeah. um second Bryceria Mace yeah this is the this is the one that was at 300 um but I don't really do that anymore so okay she's just on leftover speed gear guys we're getting to the secondary units now we're seeing a lot of second units first rem though um and so Mace, as a Rem hater though, do you still pick her a lot? Um, well, she's fallen off a bit because of Rimuru. Sure. But yeah, I mean, like I'll pick her if she's good. I, I won't be happy about it though. Okay. So even as like the uh, casino style, right? Because there are times she'll just be asleep too, even if they're AOing constantly. Um, still justifies a spot here and there when um she shines, like on the yeah, draft I mean, calls for it. It's it's just the fact of the game that sometimes you're in a draft situation where you screwed up and your out is the casino and so you, you go for it <sighs> guys i think all my drafts are screwed up then because i feel like um i'm always casino. okay armin nothing right pve guild wars no. maybe yeah back in the day back in the day tenebria no use uh x expos expos rowana um nothing to need to be said here right mace just um you like counter yeah, though? Is this, is this for Reno or is this just because you like it? Um, it's just because I have this counter gear and you know she'll give free barriers every so often, so that's kind of nice. But, but she works on every she, anything, right? Yeah, literally just get her tanky okay. and a little bit of ER, and then she'll do her job. Just double checking. Um, the Elena is this your only Elena? Uh, I think so. Yeah. So no mole is mace. Thoughts on Elena? I, I've just never really been able to fit her into a draft. I feel like. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Because I feel like um. Go ahead, go ahead. Finish your thought. Oh, I just like whenever I'm considering like, oh, Elena would be okay here. I can't take her because then I won't have enough room for like a damage dealer or something like that. I just have a lot of people swearing by her, and I'm glad you said that, Maze, because I've always kind of felt the same, and I've been really on the fence on six starring six starring her already. And if you, with all the toolkit stuff you have, still kind of eh about it, I think I'm fine waiting for now. Um, yeah, I, I think she's pretty niche, um, especially like with Rimuru and stuff I think pretty niche got it uh fire can we can skip right Terranor guard yep. PVE Alexa yep. Wyvern Sinji one shot third Correct. G Pergus all right at least he's not plus 15 miss but we no, got a third no, this GP. one's the, the Wyvern G Perg this is the Wyvern <laughs> okay Wyvern GP right there boys number three Charles uh I mean besides the did you get the um did you already have the hollow trials done already before Charles, uh, I used I used him for that yeah. for this week. Okay, real fast, guys. I think Apex highlighted it. And by the way, Ape, we did get we were rank seventy five, baby. Charles plus Lilius, get that done. I think it's still going on. Um, if you guys are lucky enough to have Charles or Lilius, one of his last remaining uses. High score on the um the Hollow Trials this week and get your reputation rewards. Uh, Leo Banshee Bologna Solitaria. I, th I, think, I we're think we're kind of at the end of the, the road, end right? Of the built units, yeah. Okay. Mace, thoughts real fast on Solitary? Um, I mean, she's she plus just 15. does nothing. Yeah, regrets. Well, I mean, I, I don't regret. Like, she's a fun unit, but yeah. um, I wish she was good. Okay, so not very good in your opinion. Any units down here that you want to make a quick note of? Pillis, you tested? For, for tested. A, speak from a, um, a newer player. Do you think she's, like, let's say we don't have FCC? Did you like her kit? I guess if you uh, don't have answers to Violet and like rem and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh you could consider her but overall for you especially no usage she's kind of like if they released an rb counter like three months after ml haste came out right? yeah like, that makes sense like, oh, she came in know, at the tail end fine. of rem and yeah but, like we already have an answer to the problem so and then they even answered another like anti yeah sure i i do think though free to plays um that don't have the meta knights can still make great use of her overall but yeah. mostly agreed. Um, nothing else here, Mace. I think yeah. I think we kind of wrapped up the overall review. Um, so Mace, top one legend this season. Oh, I, d I doubt it. Where do you normally rank up, or leave? I should say, or end up. You mean at the end of the season? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I think in season three, I ended at 49 or 50. And then nice. in season, this last season, I was 70 something, 71. This season you were 71? Mm-hmm. And then do, are you still planning to push pretty hard on this season too? Um, I'll probably try. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how the meta is. Um, like the season four meta was pretty bad. And um, I, I pushed, but I got pretty discouraged at the end. Like I was still trying, but um, if the... I guess the if the meta is really against me or is really unfun for me, mm -hmm. I may stop because now I've done it a few times. But I, I think more than likely I'll push. Okay, and then I guess last question because I kind of hinted at it earlier. In terms of metas, Maze, what do you think? First off, define what you think the end of last me the maybe like the last month of the last meta, and then what do you think the meta is going to be kind of moving forward because the season's starting, guys, in like I think a couple hours. Yeah, I think the season uh, coming up, the meta is going to be the same as it was at the end. You know, which you said was very aggressive. It's it's uh, leans aggressive, yeah. Okay. Kind of standard aggressive with a few cleavers sprinkled in. And is um, that a good is that a good meta for you? I think what makes a good meta, the most important thing that makes a good meta is that there are options. So what made the season four meta so horrible was that there were no options. You had one option, and that was carrot or cleave. So if you weren't a cleaver, you went with Carrot. And Carrot was a horrible unit to play with and to play against. She just wasn't fun. Um, if her burns missed or got 15%ed or whatever, right, it felt terrible. Okay. Um, it was a play style that really made the games go long and tedious. And I, I don't know, I just wasn't a huge fan. Um, but in this season, yes, there are. there's always going to be meta units, but I feel like there's a lot more flexibility and variability to it compared to the prior one so yeah um i think overall the meta is in a pretty decent spot right now All um, right. yes there's common meta units but they have multiple different builds and play styles they fit into and there's a decent amount of diversity yeah you've kind of highlighted that that point where you take a unit that maybe will be seen in a non-standard play but you adapt it and you gave them one role for your um for your drafts right and we seen that we saw that yeah. with like a handful of your stuff all right um mace i think if you don't mind staying around we'll do like a quick ama with a twitch chat youtube um you guys will have to stop by here because we're not going to put this in the video but i think we went long enough mace if you can real fast can you tell the people what days you stream or maybe your schedule um i don't have a fixed streaming schedule because it can be hard to fit in with work but i'd say when i do stream um it'll be like a weekday around 5 p.m. Central mm -hmm. um, or between like 5 and like 8 p.m. Central is pretty typical when I do stream. Okay. Um, on the weekends, it would be around um, 11 to 1 p.m. Central. Got it. And you have a YouTube channel as well. Are, Mace, are they the same? Mace 1370 on both? Uh, yeah, on YouTube, it's Mace 1370 Gaming. Gaming. All right. And then Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mace 1370. I'll all those links for you guys. Mace, thank you so, so much for joining us. Stick around, though, just so we can chat with Twitch for a little bit. And yeah, um, of course, man, it's been a pleasure. Standard players, check him out. 5 to 8 p.m. CST. All right. Bye, YouTube. We'll catch you all next time. Okay. Sorry, YouTube, we're adding something in real fast just for you guys. Mace, um, you wanted me to show this. Listen, this was supposed to be just for the Twitch guys, but Mace, go in and talk to us about, are you just like a big Pokemon guy? What? What's the deal with all these maxed out Moonlight pets? You got to catch them all. Oh, my God. I love it, man. Are you So you, you do enjoy collecting these? Because I'm assuming yeah. you don't need this many of... Uh, there's no real point to have all these like triple S skills, correct? You just... No, other than just having them. This Mace, which one's your favorite? I love mac and cheese. Uh, mac and cheese is one of my favorite lobby pets. Mm -hmm. And then the purple dragon is my favorite. The purple dragon? I don't even have Splash. seen that. Is he um, down here somewhere? Oh, this, uh, <laughs> this one right here. He called him Flatty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Anyways, um, yeah, YouTube, I just want to add this in. I'll, I'll cut it in right before the end.